Welcome back, guys. I didn't get a 4th of July video out, so I do apologize for that. Hope everybody had a safe and wonderful Independence Day. I know I did. We're gonna talk about the six liter a little bit. But today, I'm just moving around the block. I'm not putting my seatbelt on. I may not even get out of first gear. Uh, so today, we're gonna be working on mostly the 7.3 uh, power stroke I have. It's a 2000, 2001 F250. 7.3 power stroke diesel and uh, I've neglected the wheel bear I've neglected the wheel bearings for too long so today we're gonna be doing wheel bearings on it and um, I'll show you a couple things I had to do on my road trip to this and I'm probably gonna get shit comments probably get some comments that they shouldn't have bought a six liter but you know what honestly I went 750 miles with a high mileage six liter knowing nothing about it and it made it there and back. Got better fuel economy than my 7.3. Towed better than my 7.3. And I'm not disappointed in this 6 liter at all. The only thing that broke was basically maintenance parts that should have been replaced while a long time ago. So that being said, guys, let me get this backed into the driveway so I can unload all of our stuff from uh, our vacation. And then we'll get the 7.3 and bring it around. Alrighty, guys. So on the six liter here, 750 miles. Um, I lost my coolant recovery reservoir. The cap wasn't holding good pressure, I noticed. On top of, I had somebody, I think when they did the oil change, somebody was up here leaning on the tank and leaned on this fitting right here, cracked it and split it down the side here and it was never building great pressure until i was climbing grades and i noticed i was running a little hot so unfortunately i had to do a quick roadside repair i think i got this too full i'm gonna have to suck some of this out yeah we're a bit full need to get down here so i'm gonna have to extract some of that out my bad i was in a hurry um and also Way down there is your intercooler intake pipe here into your, into your manifold. And I, on the last probably two hours of the drive home, was climbing a grade and I decided to push her a little hard to see what she could do pulling the boat. And um, I was trying to keep it around 20 pounds of boost, not trying to push her too hard up the hills. And I just grabbed a foot full throttle and uh i don't know why i just was like yeah let's see what this thing can do for a little bit and i was going up this really nasty grade outside of bigs and yeah i heard a loud whooshing noise and my boost just fell off well needless to say the i don't know if you guys can see it it kind of looks like this it's plastic this is a rubber boot but it's like a plastic piece and where it goes in and out like this down there by the intercooler um, just because it's old and brittle and it cracked and it's got about the size of my pinky of a hole down there and uh, it's leaking boost so easy fix I'm gonna order we're gonna do a whole new um, boots and pipes we're gonna upgrade that from a plastic pipe to a aluminum pipe so it's gonna get an upgrade already which um, we're also at the same time I'm gonna order the muffler delete kit and we're going to go ahead and install a muffler delete kit because I heard one of these blow by in bigs pulling a camp trailer and it just sounded amazing. So we'll just go ahead and delete the exhaust while we're at it. Alrighty guys, so you want to start off by having a good jack and good jack stands. This is a heavy pickup. And I've got it set up like that under the axle. I've got an adapter for my lug nuts. I already broke those loose while it was on the ground jack it up take your air gun or if you have a powerful enough air gun once it's up in the air go ahead and take your lug nuts off got the tire off guys so at this point you want to take your brake caliper off which is a 17 millimeter for these two I normally take the caliper off and then you're gonna take this big bracket off alrighty guys kind of fought me a little bit there but 
Got the impactor on her. Somebody over tightened the 17s that hold the calipers on. I literally think they were like 100 foot pounds of torque. I had to get the breaker bar on her. And then I had to get the, earth, the old Earthquake XT or whatever it's called. This gun from Harbor Freight has been amazing. Don't buy a small air compressor. It doesn't um, allow the CFM or something to operate at full capacity because this gun is gutless here. If I take it over to Papa's huge 80 or 100 gallon tank, whatever that one is. Actually, it's a, I think it's a 60 or an 80 gallon tank. Uh, this thing is super powerful. We caught the brakes in time. If your brakes look like this, chewed up a bubble gum, toss them aside, have my wife go to the store and pick those up. All right, the next task we need to do is we need to get a 21 millimeter socket and probably gonna use your breaker bar here on this one. And yeah, we're definitely gonna be using a breaker bar. And we're gonna take this bracket that holds the caliper on off next. A lot of guys will take that off as one. You can do it that way. I've always liked to take the caliper off the bracket, set it aside, and then take the bracket off, set it aside, and then put it back in two pieces, especially now that we're doing a brake job. Uh, I'm not gonna do rotors. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this the redneck cheap way today. <laughs> uh, nobody has rotors in town, and I didn't expect to be doing a brake job, but I don't wanna gouge these rotors up, so we're just gonna put a cheap set of pads on for right now i know i'm gonna get some shit for that but that's the way i'm gonna do it and then later on down the road here when i get some downtime we're gonna go ahead and put some new or we can go see if these are turnable or put some new rotors on and some high-end brake pads Alrighty, guys now that we've got the bracket off on the, and to the side make sure you don't get that confused from up to uh, you know for, up or down um, make sure I guess there's no way to confuse that one. But anyway, I've got it set there the way I took it off. Now you can go ahead and just remove your disc. You should have something that looks like this. All right, now, this is your hub. <laughs> these don't have greased, these don't have greased bearings. These are sealed. Uh, so your next step now is to spin this hub around till you see these two prongs right here. Boom, boom and find a pair of pliers because you want to squeeze these together and you're going to remove there's a ring around here well, i'll show you what that looks like here in a second all righty take these pliers pull these in to they touch and you're just going to work this ring out like that and then you're going to grab your hub you're just going to wiggle up and down left and right and there's your automatic hub on these pops right out now you're gonna need a set of snap ring pliers. All right, snap ring pliers go in. Put the two little pegs in the hole. Pull that guy on out with your snap ring pliers. You're gonna have a washer looking nut. You've got two washers and then a nut looking thing that comes out. I'm not sure what those are called. All right, so now your hub, your hub is disconnected from your axle shaft. Now you can go ahead and re, um, go ahead and unloosen the four, let's see, one, two, three, four bolts on the back of the hub. All right, so the uh, four on the back are the same as the uh, bigger um, bracket bolts we took out there, it's a 21. And it's just tucked in back here, it's kind of a pain to get to. I might have to get an extension on that. Let me see. So I got in there, breaker bar, turn the steering wheel all the way to the right. And then what we're gonna do is turn it all the way to the left so we can get the uh, two front ones. Okay guys, now that you got your four bolts out, you need to think about, okay, is this an ABS model or is it a non-ABS? A, a non Cause you're gonna have a wire here. You're just gonna hit this back and forth. Try to not nick your studs. I don't know if there's any models out there that, um, or if there's any uh, parts out there that don't come with the studs. I'm pretty sure ours comes with the studs. But you're gonna wanna punch those out. It took a 3 16th 
That's what it looks like. Got it in there now. It's actually a bit loose, so it's probably a metric. So on the other side, I'll try to find a metric set. But if you bought a wheel bearing and it's an ABS and you don't have ABS on your pickup, what you can do is clip the wire that comes on the wheel bearing, if, if it does come with one, and just clip it right at where the sensor comes out. I just, I just clip it off right there. But you're gonna want this sensor left into that damn um, wheel bearing or send it back and get another one. But there is non-ABS Super Duties out there. I've seen them. All right. Now, you can see that this thing was leaking in here and it shouldn't have been doing that. And there's moose, moosey, nastiness. These wheel bearings aren't bad. I mean, they were making noise. There's grease that was falling out of the seal bearing. I don't, that's not supposed to look that way, guys. Not supposed to look that way at all. Alrighty, guys. So I found it's an 8 millimeter. I followed it back, unclipped it, unclipped it, went around this fender, the plugs back behind this fender, unplugged it, and eight millimeter here. Gonna go ahead and unscrew that. Alrighty, guys. All right, I'm back from the parts store because we did. I didn't know we were gonna be doing brake pads today. This is what I ordered last week on Amazon. Detroit Axle had a good rating. And the reason I ordered the Detroit Axles was one, the good rating, and two, it comes with the stud kit. Now, the last time I did a Super Duty was probably about 10 years ago on my buddy Bub's truck. He's always had Super Duties. And uh, you had to, you had to take your studs, your four studs out of the back, which I've got in my hand right here. You had to take those out of your old one and use them. And you had to take all your, uh, you had to take all your lug studs out as well and reuse those. And when I seen that this came with these, I'm guessing that's some sort of anti-lock on there too. That's pretty cool. When I seen these came with studs, on both sides, I was sold. I'll let you guys know in about a year or two what I think of these. But for right now, looking at it, it's good quality shit. What I tell you, it was gonna come with a new sensor, so I need to unplug the old one. We will do that when we get it on the truck, guys. And then I went to O'Reilly's, and since those pads Got me a brake kit. Those brake pads are crap, and these, uh, this brake, the premium brake kit comes with all the new brackets. All new brackets, and these were all busted on mine. So, we're gonna put all new parts in. All right, there we go. All righty, guys, I've read online several sources, 133 foot-pounds is what they're supposed to be torqued to. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm not responsible for that number because I couldn't really get a straight answer and I do not have a shop manual, manual, so. I'm just saying that's what I found and that's what I'm working to. I went ahead and put the bracket back on for the brakes. And I also put the uh, disc back on and torqued it down to 133 as well because I couldn't get a straight answer online. So there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and get the pads on next. Alrighty guys. So I went ahead and see, you put your C-clamp on to hold one in, in place. And then I ran this C-clamp in, made it tight, and then I ran this C-clamp in. You're gonna need two, this is a, uh, two of them. This is a uh, dual piston caliper. Right, you want to make sure those are all the way in, and then you can back them off. You can't do just one, otherwise you'll push the other one out and screw up your caliper. Another way to do it is just buy a preloaded caliper, switch out your brake line, and then you will have to 
You will have to bleed your brakes. So, with that being said, I am going to go grab our brakes and I will catch you in a minute when they're all in there. All right, after the washers, C-clip, put the C-clips all the way on there, clip, clip, I'm not sure what you call that, clean off your hub, check your O-ring, this one's a little dirty but she'll ride. Remember you got a new O-ring that you gotta fight through to get that some bitch back on there. Oh shit, that's a new O-ring. That's for a different year. Interesting. I just took that O-ring off, the new one. You want to make sure this is proper guys otherwise your hub's going to be flying off down the road you don't want that hubs aren't cheap grab it take your hub give a good yank make sure you got that set in there good okay now yeah, that o-ring wouldn't have fit in there must be for a different style not mine Now we're just going to go ahead and turn the wheel straight, put the wheel back on, torque them down, and you're going to want to retorque these after 100 miles with the new studs. Don't forget that. Alrighty guys, um, basically you do the same thing on the other side. I'm not going to show that. I'm going to get back to work. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put that wheel bearing on that side off camera. It's the same side to side. Um, next episode on this truck, we are going to put a new tow mirror on and replace the one that broke and we're going to do some door lock replacement again. Don't buy cheap door locks for these. Do not do it. Just don't do it. Don't think about it. It only lasts about a year. And guess what? You're doing it again. So with that being said, guys, do give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on the notification bell. We'll catch you next time on Such Oregon Shenanigans. See you here.